Hi there and welcome to this video. Recently I haven't been getting out as much um, to do photography and videos um, as I'd like to because I've got quite a few pressures of projects, quite a few plates spinning. So I thought today I was in the area um, down south in Surrey in the UK and I thought I'd come out and do some photography in between um, a couple of meetings. So I'm down just south of Guildford in the Surrey Hills um, at a place called Watts Chapel and it's a really nice um, chapel in a cemetery. I've been here before and it was built um, as a tribute to Mary Watts um, who was a ceramicist who did a lot of work in terracotta um, as a medium and it was built by her or um, funded by her husband G.F. Watts who was a Victorian artist and it's a really nice little chapel in the cemetery as I say and inside is really ornate a lot of green and gold um, uh, painting however it's a very confined space and it's quite dark I came here a few years ago and got quite a nice shot um, with my D800 and I had to shoot it um, at about 17 mil so I wanted to come back with my 14 to 30 attached to my Z7 and see if I could get a better shot than I did then. However, when I got here, it's um, just undergoing some restoration and they've started the exterior work. So getting in while the builders were working was quite a challenge. So I could only get in for a very short period while the builders were having their lunch break. So I thought while I was out, um, as that didn't work out quite as I thought, I'd just capture a few thoughts around the new Nikon um, firmware for the Z6 and Z7, the version 3, um, what that means for us and what thoughts around it. It's not going to be a detailed um, test of it or a specification trawl. Um, it's merely a few thoughts from me around what it might mean um, and how it might be quite important. So obviously we had the version 2.2 firmware that came out um, at the tail end of um, 2019 or the beginning of 2020 and that gave us ProRes RAW if you paid for the upgrade um, but it also gave us CF Express um, card um, capability but only with uh, Sony CF Express cards so we had that which was good it was a new piece of functionality that had been promised for a long time plus some upgrades um, so version 3 the headline is, you know, this animal eye autofocus. And whilst that's a great piece of additional functionality, we're seeing some mixed results. Now, I don't have any pets and I don't tend to shoot pets. So for me, it's not a big um, selling point. However, I guess Nikon have to compete with the likes of Sony and have this functionality. And it will be useful for a lot of users and some of you, I'm sure. However, I think it needs a little bit of finessing still. From what I'm seeing. It's meant to be limited to cats and dogs however uh, a few people have tried it on some other animals and it seems to work okay on those as well. So apologies if I'm slightly out of breath. I am walking along the uh, North Downs Way. It's a really nice footpath and cycle path that goes all, pretty much along the, um, the south of um, England um, but it's quite tranquil even though you're quite close into London so I thought I'd go for a walk. So I'm slightly out of breath, um, I apologise. Um, in addition to the animal eye autofocus, we obviously got um, the ability to use additional CF Express cards. So from Prograde and Lexar. Um, and my guess is this isn't additional functionality, it's just taken a few more weeks for Nikon to really test out those cards and check that they work. They may have had to make some slight tweaks, but uh, that would be in the background, I guess. So the interesting piece of additional functionality for me personally is what Nikon call the improved usability for subject tracking. Now I found subject tracking quite reliable and quite good um, in the previous firmware. And I've used it a few times on some moving subjects and it's, it's done pretty well. Um, and there are two aspects to the 
firmware update. The first one is that Nikon say they've improved the algorithm to make it more like the 3D focus tracking in their DSLRs. And this is an area that if you've had or you've got a Nikon DSLR, you'll know that 3D tracking is really reliable. I had it in my um, D850 when I last used it and I found it really good and really reliable. And what makes it quite reliable or really high performing is that it's very predictive in its nature. So it will be predicting where the, the subject in focus is going in the future, not just following it in the present. And it does this by using what Nikon call Nikon servo overlap. And it's a particular technology that Nikon have developed. And really it just allows the camera to focus where it's predicting the um, subject will be if you were to press the shutter now, because there was a very slight lag between where it's focusing now and pressing the shutter. Now, it'll be interesting to see what people think over time about whether those improvements to the algorithms in the Z series have brought, its, brought their performance closer to that of the DSLRs. If they have, that will be great because it will take something for me that was already quite high performing and make it even better. The second part of the firmware upgrade in this area is the one that really interests me because one of the challenges with um, Nikon subject tracking that I found was how you selected it and deselected it. It was a little bit clunky. You had to um, be in the right mode to start with. You then had to um, press OK, maneuver the subject tracking box over what you wanted, press OK again, and it would track the subject. Um, when you wanted to turn it off, you had to hit another button on the back, which was quite a reach for my thumbs. Um, and that was a little bit difficult. What Nikon have done in this firmware release is really smart. It's not really new functionality. It's using existing functionality, but giving you the ability to tailor it further. And what they've done is allowed you using the menu system. And if you go into the setup menu and go to option F2 for stills or G2 for video, you can allocate the subject tracking mode to one of the two function buttons on the front of the camera around the lens mount on the right hand side um, or the left hand side if you're facing the lens mount, um, the F1 and F2 buttons. So I've allocated it to the F1 button and what this means is that if you're in the right focus modes, when you press the F1 button, if you've got it allocated to F1, you will see the subject tracking box come up. If you then got AF on button set as your focusing, if, if you press the AF on button, it will lock onto whatever it, that focus box is over at that point in time. And so long as you hold that AF on button down, you can move the camera and the focus point will lock on to the subject and maintain that subject. And it seems to work pretty well. Equally, if you don't use AF on and you use you know, half, a, um, half depression on the shutter release button, it will do the same with that. So actually that makes it really usable. And when you release the AF on button the cam or the shutter release, um, the camera will stop tracking that subject. And if you press the F1 button again, it will go back to the original um, focus mode. So a lot simpler. Um, and just using one extra button push, which is in a really good place on the camera. So what does this all mean? Um, for me, the fact that Nikon called this firmware upgrade version 3.0 rather than version 2.3 indicates that they've you know, they, they're clearly trying to market this as additional functionality. And that's actually quite good because what we're seeing is with most of the firmware releases, Nikon is bundling new firmware or new functionality with tweaks to existing functionality. And it's great that they're doing this, what, 18 months after the cameras were launched. They're obviously trying to maintain their position in the market, which is great. Um, it's a competitive market. And they are playing catch up slightly to the likes of Sony, who are on to, you know, generations three, four of their cameras, whereas Nikon, this is their first generation. So it's really good to see that Nikon is, you know, investing in releasing these firmware updates.
The challenge they've got, I guess, is that whilst a lot of the functionality they're releasing is tweaks to the software, there will come a point in time where the cameras are hardware constrained. So for example, processing the data from 400 or 200 focus points is quite processor intensive. And you can only make it f so fast with the processor capability, the memory capability built into the camera. So we will hit probably a constraint, which is a hardware constraint at some point. We don't appear to have hit that too much at the moment. Um, however, it will come a point in time. And that's probably when we'll see Nikon release a, a mid midlife update of the camera, perhaps with just a processor upgrade and a few extra tweaks to it. Um, but will that be this year or will it be 2021? Who knows? It'll be an interesting um, time around the middle of 2020 to see whether Nikon releases um, a sort of version two uh, or a mid midlife update of the Z6 and Z7. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below, you know, how are you finding version three of the firmware? What are your thoughts on Nikon's approach? Are they beginning to close the gap on the likes of Sony? Um, or is there a way to go yet? As I say, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell below, and I look forward to seeing you on a future video. So over and out from the Surrey Hills.